What is new sincerity? And is this really a genre of film? Welcome to the 10 Second Film School. I'm Prof Linus. Thanks for tuning in. In this video, we will explore the genre of new sincerity, which is a contemporary alternative film genre similar to comedy and drama, in that it encourages the genuine emotional connection between the characters and viewer. It is a genre that came about in the late 80s to early 90s as a response to the ironic postmodern films that became popular as the classical Hollywood era came to a close. Similar to comedy and drama, New Sincerity is not an iconic genre, so it is a descriptor that can be attributed to many types of stories. Two important writers have described New Sincerity in a very cogent and meaningful way. The first of these writers is Jim Collins, who details in his write-up Genericity in the 90s, Eclectic Irony in the New Sincerity, that films that belong to this new category must treat genre conventions seriously. They also must delve into the emotions that warrant rediscovery and renewed passion of past genuine filmmaking, going back even as far as the pre-code era of cinema. James Pony Wozzeck, whose article, How TV Went From David Brent to Ted Lasso, details the shift from irony to sincerity in TV. According to his research, film narratives where what the storyteller wants and what the character wants is aligned. It is an earnest and direct way of telling a story. Postmodern films break narrative conventions that were previously established, and often break editorial and photographic conventions of the film as well. Some postmodernist films might be Living in Oblivion, Chunking Express, Pulp Fiction. All great movies, but these films feature more irony than emotional sincerity. New sincerity films might be movies like Kingdom of Heaven, Titanic, Garden State, and Moonrise Kingdom. I'll go more in depth on Wes Anderson in a little bit. I'm not saying that films outside of New Sincerity aren't emotional, but New Sincerity films encourage first order emotion to be its primary purpose. No double meaning, no ambiguity, no unnecessary complications, or the notion of multiple interpretations. Instead, we are touching on an understanding of the characters without the need of overanalysis usually required for postmodernism. As its name implies, and like most genres, New Sincerity is a response to what has preceded it. Wes Anderson is a great example of a New Sincerity director. His characters are often set in an environment clear of distractions. The characters' emotional states are easy to follow, and there is little reliance on multiple interpretations. His movies are known for its production design and costume design, of course, but I think his clean production design is in service of making the mundane, everyday distresses that human beings experience a beautiful tapestry for the film's viewer. There are many examples, but let's take a look at his 1998 film Rushmore. Rushmore seems to be styled after the great 80s comedies of John Hughes, but its handling of the central character, Max Fisher, is what makes this film identifiable as new sincerity. For all the character flaws, for how improbable his love for his teacher Miss Cross, we are following him and rooting for him the entire way. We don't feel that the filmmaker intends to punish his main character by making him a character in his movie. For example, every interaction between the child characters feels genuine. When Jason Schwartzman's Max meets Bill Murray's Herman Bloom, we are rooting for this friendship. The actors portraying roles in a new sincerity film are believable. We know that one actor really understands the other actor. There's this great scene, a very necessary scene in the film that sums up the meaning of the film's title. It's when Herman and Jason have this exchange. She's my Rushmore, Max. Yeah, I know. She was mine too. At this point of the film, we understand that Rushmore is not just the name of the institution that these two men are tied to, but that Rushmore is evocative of Mount Rushmore, a symbolic monument of achievement, a Goliath which both men fail to beat. Unlike many masculine-oriented films that might deal with the procedural aspects of dating behavior, or the critically ironic view of modern or western dating practices, here we are focusing more on the real depth and a sympathetic look at both men. Even though these mismatched anti-heroes are both after the same woman, and are similarly weak rivals to each other, we don't see them as cookie-cutter hero-anti-hero archetypes. Instead, we appreciate them for their unambiguous emotional states. Their simplicity as characters is what makes them relatable. New Sincerity enables the viewer to step back and appreciate the proven emotional links between human beings, and celebrates the connection between filmmaker and audience member. In postmodernism, the audience is often made to think. In New Sincerity, you are allowed to feel. In this new genre, the filmmaker and audience are viewing the film with a mutual understanding. Neither the characters nor the process of storytelling is being criticized or derided. New Sincerity is a return to the acceptance of genre tropes as functional components to language and storytelling. 
Hi everyone. If you liked what you saw, please follow me at the social media accounts you see on the screen. If you wish to show more support, I will also include a link to my Patreon page and a link to purchase my new classroom textbook. Thank you so much again for visiting and don't forget to subscribe.